Hello and welcome everyone to the Environment Primer series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pragya. In today's episode of Environment Primer, on the special occasion of the World Wetlands Day, we are going to dive deep into the world of wetlands. The title of our today's discussion is India increases this tally of Ramsar sites. And these Ramsar sites are very important from the perspective of your examination. In this discussion, we are firstly going to study about what are wetlands. Then we are also going to analyze and study the Ramsar Convention on the Protection and Conservation of Wetlands. Then we are also going to study about the new Ramsar sites that have been added in India on the occasion of the World Wetlands Day 2024. And lastly, we will be discussing some of the important questions for, from the perspective of your prelims examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, wetlands are vital and the most productive ecosystems on earth. They flaunt about a variety of biodiversity, variety of flora and fauna, especially the bird species. And every year on February 2, we celebrate the World Wetlands Day to mark the signing of the Ramsar Convention. And the theme of the World Wetland Day 2024 is Wetlands and Human Well-Being. So, this is the theme for the World Wetlands Day 2024. So, this brings us to an important point of discussion of our today's episode that what exactly do we understand by this term wetlands? So, if I talk to you about the meaning of the term wetlands and if I try to explain it to you in very simple and layman terms, it means an area, an area where land and water meet, land and water meet okay so basically this is a transitional area between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and water is the point of sustainability here water is the environmental force that drives life uh, basically the animal life and the plant life on these wetlands so wetlands are defined as lands transitional between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems where the water table is usually at or near the surface or the land is covered by shallow water. So, basically water is the sustainable factor here which drives the plants and animal lives and that is why this transitional area is known as a wetland, wet plus land. Moving forward, Although wetlands occupy a relatively small portion of the earth's surface, they play a crucial role as integral systems because they help us in uh, regulating the water flow, they provide us with clean water and they also help us in mitigating the worst impacts of the climate change. Okay, but sadly these wetland ecosystem is also threatened because of land degradation, marine pollution, climate change etc. And that is why we need to protect and conserve these vital ecosystems. They serve as the circulatory system of the landscape, brimming with biodiversity and holding immense importance for the human existence. Moving forward, wetlands function as both water sources and natural filters, safeguarding our coastlines and serving as substantial carbon reservoirs. So basically there are five main types of wetlands. First is the marshes, then swamps, peatlands, mangroves and estuaries. So basically these are the broad kinds of wetlands. Okay. Marshes, swamps, peatlands, mangroves and estuaries. Okay. And they are indispensable for agriculture and fisheries because it is a land between the transitional area of territorial and aquatic ecosystems and that is why it is very beneficial for agriculture as well as fishing activities. 
without wetlands a world lacking in water resources would emerge and that is definitely not going to be okay for the survival of the human kind now let us see a pictorial representation of these wetlands so as you can see there is this land then in between there is water so these are the transitional areas between the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and here are the famous birds because wetlands are very famous for their bird species as i have mentioned it to you before also now let us study and talk about the ramsar convention which is very famous for the protection and conservation of these vital ecosystems known as the wetlands so basically the ramsar convention officially known as the convention on wetlands of international importance especially as waterfowl habitat is an international treaty dedicated to the conservation and sustainable use of wetlands and kindly let me know in the comment box below is this international treaty legally binding or not it was adopted on february 2 1971 and that is why we observe the world wetlands day every year on february 2 to mark the adoption and signing of the ramsar convention in the iranian city of ramsar and that is why the name is ramsar convention and it came into force on december 21 1975 moving forward the convention's mission is to promote the use and conservation of wetlands through national actions and international cooperation so basically it talks about both the aspects that is national action and international cooperation The convention has been ratified by over 90 nations in India. The convention entered into force on February 1, 1982. Moving forward, let us study about the new Ramsar sites that have been added in the Indian Ramsar sites on the occasion of the World Wetlands Day 2024. So the wetlands that are newly added are number 1 Magadi Kere Conservation Reserve. Anka Samudra Bird Conservation Reserve, Aghnashini Estuary, Karai Vetti Bird Sanctuary, and Longwood Shola Reserve Forest. So, see, these are the five new Ramsar sites that have been added in India. Now, let me know the total number of Ramsar sites in India in the comment box below. Now, let us study about them one by one. So, the first one is Magadi Kere Conservation Reserve. so the reserve is known for its stunning fresh water lake magadi kere which is a vital source for the local wildlife and this is a human made wetland human made wetland that means we have been successfully uh, able to protect and preserve this wetland okay it provides a habitat for various bird species including migratory birds making it a significant bird watching destination and it is very famous for the bar headed goose bar headed goose okay the reserve hosts a rich biodiversity of flora and fauna including aquatic plants and terrestrial species and let me know in the comment box below in which state it is located in moving forward to the anka samudra bird conservation reserve so the anka samudra bird conservation reserve is renowned for being a critical habitat for numerous bird species especially the migratory birds that is why it is also known as the birds paradise The diverse avian population includes waterfowl, waders, and other aquatic birds. Anka Samudra serves as an essential stopover point for many migratory birds during their seasonal journeys, and that is why this has been declared as a Ramsar site so that we can able to preserve the habitat of these migratory birds. Apart from birds, it also has nine endemic fish species.
okay so apart from being a bird is paradise it also has nine endemic fish species moving forward to the aganashini estuary so the estuary is renowned for it pristine and ecologically rich environment because it has no dams no industrial establishments no industrial establishments and no major townships no major townships in its vicinity so basically it has no dams no industrial establishments and no major townships and that is why it is very you know calm and serene in nature and that is why it is renowned for its pristine and ecologically rich environment it supports a diverse range of flora and fauna including numerous fish species and waterfalls and it is very famous for the indian river trend indian river trend it also has the mangrove ecosystem mangrove eco which helps in maintaining the fertility of the soil the aganashini estuary is vital for local fisheries providing breeding and feeding grounds for various marine life it plays a crucial role in maintaining coastal water quality and acts as a natural buffer against erosion and storm surges so this becomes very important and that is why it has been granted the ramsar site tag the demand of which was made since the year 2021 and let me know in the comment box below the state in which this aganashini estuary is located moving forward to the karaiveti bird sanctuary so the sanctuary is one of the most important fresh water feeding ground for migratory water birds in the state of tamil nadu it is known for its diverse avian population including various resident and migratory bird species and it provides a vital habitat for water birds and serves as an essential foraging sites for many avian species and that is why this becomes very important because uh, the uh, indians new ramsar sites that have been declared on the occasion of world wetlands day 2024 have a special focus on preserving the bird species okay moving forward to the longwood shola reserve forest and this is the only urban shola reserve forests in the heart of the nilgiris so the longwood shola is an integral part of the nilgiris ecosystem which is fragile and this was almost lost like and a british person saved this longwood shola reserve forest from being completely extinct okay the area is rich in herpeto fauna diversity with several species endemic to the western ghats and considered threatened by the iucn and it also includes the indian giant squirrel so the longwood shola reserve forest is home to the indian giant squirrel okay shola forests are tropical montane forests found in the upper reaches of the western ghats and they are home to various endemic species in the western ghats moving forward the sholas are an important part of the local ecosystem the shola grassland ecosystem is characterized by dense growth of trees in the depressions and folds of the western ghats surrounded by extensive area of grasslands and grasslands constitute about 80% of such forests so basically the government is trying to preserve these forests because we are trying to create a natural carbon sink for limiting the worst impacts of climate change for limiting the greenhouse gas emissions and that is why conservation of these forests become very important and this 
Longwood Shola Reserve Forest is the only urban uh, Shola Reserve Forest that is left and that is why the government is very worried about its protection and conservation and that is why it has earned its tag of being a Ramsar site. So with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have seen what are wetlands, we have also studied about the Ramsar convention and we have also seen that yes, it is very important for us to conserve and preserve these vital ecosystems. And we have also studied and discussed in details the new Ramsar sites that have been added in India. So basically this is a previous practice question as I have mentioned in the previous session that from now onwards I will be answering the previous practice questions in the upcoming session. So in previous session I asked you this question and asked you to answer in the comment box below. So the question was consider the following statements. Your statement number A was tropical forests cover 7% of the earth's land surface and your option B was they are known as the lungs of the earth. So which of the statements given above is are correct? The options were option A was one only, option B was two only, option C was both one and two and option D was none of the above. So your correct answer is going to be option C. Both first and second statements are correct. And if you want to know about this more, kindly watch the previous episode of the Environment Primer. Now let us discuss the practice questions for today's session. So the question is, if rainforests and tropical forests are the lungs of the earth, then surely wetlands function as its kidneys. Which one of the following functions of wetlands best reflects the above statement? And this is a PYQ that was asked in the year 2022. The options are option A. The water cycle in wetlands involves surface runoff, subsoil power location and evaporation. Option B is algae form nutrient base upon which Fish, mollusks, birds, reptiles and mammals thrive. The option C is wetlands play a vital role in maintaining sedimentation balance and soil stabilization. The option D is aquatic plants absorb heavy metals and excess nutrients. So the correct answer will be option D and this is a P by Q that has been asked in the year 2022. Now let us discuss some of the more questions. So the question is. Which one of the following is an artificial lake? This is also a PYQ that has been asked in the year 2018. So your option A is Kodai Kanal, Tamil Nadu, Koleru, Andhra Pradesh, C, Nanital, Uttarakhand and D, Renuka, Himachal Pradesh. So kindly drop your answer in the comment box below. I will be revealing the answer in the next session. Now let us discuss the last question of our today's discussion. So the question is which Ramsar site in India is known for its crucial role in the conservation of the olive ridley sea turtle and let me know the IUCN status of olive ridley sea turtle okay. Your option A is Bhitar Kanika mangroves, Nal Sarovar bird sanctuary, C is Pongdang lake and D is Sambar lake. So kindly drop the answer in the comment box below and I will reveal the answer in the next session. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, kindly drop it in the comment box below. If you found the today's discussion to be helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates and you can get the PDF of this session in the telegram channel. The challenge link is there in the description box. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.